seeing you. How are all of my beautiful, lovely, planty people doing today? I hope you are doing amazing. I am doing well. As you may or may not be able to see, I am in the swing of Christmas decorating right now. And if you know me, if you've been around for a few Christmases here on my channel, I get a little Christmas crazy. <laughs> Um, some people have referred to my decorating style as, hey Nikki, it looks like Santa walked into your house and puked Christmas. <clears throat> and you know what? I take that as a compliment. <laughs> my decorating style is just homey and Christmassy and warm and vibey. You know what I'm saying? Vibey? Is that even a word? Anyway, I really like Christmas. Um, it's not to the point where it's tacky, but I do love having Christmas decorations around. My kids love it. It really gets us all in the Christmas spirit, just having Christmas everywhere in the house. That's not why you're here, <laughs> right? but it's me. So this is, this is what you get. <laughs> this is what you signed up for. Um, for those of you who are new here, hi, hello, welcome. My name is Nikki. This is my channel, Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. And for my lovely, wonderful GFPs who keep coming back for more, my gluttons for punishment, Thank you guys so much. It is amazing to see you as always. Okay, so today's video, last week I asked you guys to send me in Q&A type questions. <laughs> I just asked you to send me questions, not the answers, because I asked you guys to send me in some questions, planty, personal, whatever you got, throw it at me. And I was originally going to do a repot with me Q and A. However, I've had some stuff go on in the last week. And honestly, I, I'm not able to do the repotting portion, but I still want to do the Q and A because I promised you a Q and A. <laughs> so this is the Q and A. Stop saying Q and A. Said it again. Okay. So that is what we're going to do today. So it's going to be just a chill video. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to look at my phone. I'm going to answer some questions, you know, We'll have some laughs because I'm sure some of these are probably interesting. Um, so this is a video that you can actually sit down and watch or you can throw me on in the background while you're watering plants, cleaning leaves, which I highly recommend. Tis the season. Wash your leaves, um, you know, or whatever it is you're doing. Just put me on in the background. Just pretend like I'm not here, but like, let's listen. Okay. So without further ado, oh my God, let's get started. I have tons of energy today. Let's just hop into your burning questions. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer the ones from Instagram first. Um, I'll put the little question box right here. Um, I don't know how to do that thing where it makes it look like, like a little bubble. I'm not that technically inclined. So I'm just going to put the screenshot right here. Um, just to pay a little homage to the people who took the time out of their day to send me questions. By the way, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It makes these videos a lot better when I actually have questions to answer. So I appreciate you. <laughs> okay, question number one. If you had to switch your collection with another plant tuber, who would it be? Ooh, I have to give up my collection? I really like my collection. But if I had to choose, like if somebody was like holding me at night point, be like, Nikki, you have to choose. <sighs> Not that that would ever happen. But if it did, I would definitely choose Ella from the Plants Meow. Her collection is beautiful. Um, it's aesthetic. It's beautifully curated. Her plants are so well taken care of. She's so knowledgeable. If you're not familiar with her, here's her channel. Go give her a, a subscribe. Check out her videos. I think she's on a little hiatus currently from uploading. I think she's got a lot of like plant stuff going on in the background, uh, but I believe she is going to start uploading again. So go ahead, check out some of her videos in the meantime. She knows so much about Anthurium that she is like, ah, the go-to when it comes to all things Anthurium. So go check out Ella. She is definitely someone who I would trade my collection with if I was forced to at knife point. Anyways, let's move on to question number two. I'm not gonna count these because I'm gonna lose track. Uh, the next question. So the next question is trailer update. 
Okay, so I know a lot of people, uh, some people are interested in the whole trailer situation, some people aren't, but for those of you who are, um, lots has happened. Um, I've kind of updated people on Instagram, just posting some photos uh, along the process. Now, unfortunately, you haven't seen any new updates recently because I live in Canada and we had to close our trailer down on the Thanksgiving weekend, Canadian Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, it's just, it's cold. It's too cold, water freezes, bad things happen. So, um, I did take a lot of footage of me redoing it. Uh, if you don't know, um, we purchased a trailer in 2018. It was a 2019 model, brand new trailer, <laughs> brand new trailer, beautiful, but it was very dark. I wanted something more modern. I wanted something brighter so that that small trailer space doesn't feel even smaller. Um, I just wanted to change it up. So what I did was I have started the process of repainting the entire thing. I'll scroll through some photos here while I'm, while I'm talking about it. Um, so I just wanted to give it kind of like a modern farmhouse sort of vibe, sort of like my kitchen. Um, I just renovated my kitchen, um, at the beginning of this year. Uh, I do have a video on my second channel that I never upload on in case you want to see that if you're into like reno videos and stuff. Um, and so that's what I wanted to do with the trailer as well. I'm so happy with how it's turning out so far. And I have lots more planned for this coming spring in May when we're able to go back up and open up the trailer. Um, so if you want to check out the highlights bubble on my Instagram account, I do have some photos and video in there of kind of where we're at so far. Um, like I said, I do have an actual video that, or video clips that I've shot while I was doing the renovation. I don't know if that's something that you guys are interested in seeing right now, or if you wanted me to wait until the second part's done and I can squish them together, make a big one. I don't know, let me know. But as far as the trailer update goes, it's doing, it's going well. I love it. It's looking amazing and bright and clean and fresh and I love it. Okay, <laughs> let's move on to the next question. <laughs> I like this one. What's the most <laughs> What's the most annoying plant and why is it peperomia? <laughs> it's like you know me. Um, you know what? Even if I hadn't have seen this question, that's probably one of the ones that I would have chosen simply for the fact that as long as I've had plants, I cannot keep those alive to save my life. I think the only one I have right now and it's not doing well, uh, is the Peperomia Pink Lady. And if you watched my previous video, you know what that plant currently looks like. Like, I don't even know why I bother to try. I just, I'm stubborn. You guys know this about me, I'm stubborn. Um, I just have such a tricky time with them. And I know so many people who just love Peperomias and they collect all of the different thousands of varieties or hundreds or however many there are and just swear by them and I just can't do it. Just can't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you're right. It definitely is the most annoying plant in my opinion for me personally and it is definitely the peperomia. <laughs> All right, next question. How is your predatory mite switch going? Oh, that is a whole video in itself. Um, I have a lot of thoughts, opinions, um, on predatory mites for a large houseplant collection such as mine. Um, I know there is some conflicting um, opinions on this. And so when I talk about predatory mites, um, in my experience, it is exactly that. If you are somebody who uses predatory mites and you swear by them, they work for you, you can afford them, absolutely wonderful. I love that for you. Um, in my personal experience in my home with my particular collection and my financial abilities, I don't like them. <laughs> I know I'm going to get people in the comments. Ah! I actually had this one woman who, when I had posted about it on Instagram, because I was just like in a very frustrated state at the time, and she messaged me and ripped a strip off me because I was damaging this massive company, like my 5,000 followers on Instagram, only which of about 500 people saw that story. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> like that was going to affect this massive business that's been in business for years. Like, I appreciate that you think I have that much clout in this particular industry, but I just don't. Um, and it's my opinion, which I'm allowed to, to convey. Um, so in my particular case, I don't use predatory mites any longer. I've tried them a couple times. Um, I have followed all pre and post situations. Um, I've used the predatory mites previous to any sort of outbreak. So what I do is I make sure it's at a point where my collection is stable. Um, there's no outbreaks. There's no crazy pest issues going on. And I use them as a preventative. Um, the ones that I get are the ones that will target the larva and the eggs. They don't actually go for like, they won't kill like a, an adult thrips. Um, so you want to use them if you're going to use them as a preventative. Um, these ones in particular, anyway, there are you know, ones that you can get and pay much more for that will target the adults, um, but they are really expensive and um, it's not a sustainable ongoing situation in my life currently. Um, so after both times that I've used them, I ended up with a massive outbreak. Now, am I saying that there was something in those little packets that I received that caused this massive outbreak? No, but I find it kind of coincidental. Um, and again, I'm not naming the company that I bought my mites from at all. I am not saying that that's what this company has done. I don't think that they're purposely putting uh, larva and eggs of thrips and things into the, that's stupid. That's like this big conspiracy theory that I am not, I just, in my personal collection, in my personal opinion, they don't work for me at all. And the two times that I've used them, two or three times, might be three times, um, I've ended up with bigger problems after the fact. Not only that, but you do have to replace your little packets or reapply your beneficials every, they, I think they say four to six weeks. Now, for a collection the size of mine in my home, it costs me I think it was about $150 to $175. No, I'm not spending that once a month for something that, in my opinion, doesn't work the best. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say on it for now. Um, I may put together a full video on it. Um, I don't know. Let me know if that's something that you guys um, would be interested in watching. Um, I did reach out to the company and they are willing to answer some questions for me. So uh, having said that, if you have questions about predatory mites, if you have uh, concerns, put all of that stuff down in the comments of this video so I can go through and pull those out. And um, I'll try to put together a full video on predatory mites from um, my perspective as well as their their answers to some of our questions and concerns okay that was long this video is gonna be so long i'm so sorry but you know what it's friday it's our long video kick your feet up have a drink uh have some eggnog okay next question would you collect jewel orchids um collect Probably not. Like, I'm probably not going to go out and buy, like, all the different ones. Would I own one? Absolutely. I've owned a couple uh, over the last few years. And, you know, I'd consider buying another one if I really liked it. They're really great for terrariums and things. Actually, it'd be really cool if I could find a couple really pretty ones, you know, with those, like, lightning bolts. Um, the name is totally slipping me right now. But I think that would look really cool in this terrarium. And I'd love to put something like that in there. Um, I just really haven't run across one and it's not something I've gone out and searched for. Um, but I wouldn't collect them as, as I collect, you know, like philodendrons and, and stuff like that, if that makes any sense. Okay, uh, next one. Do you still have a greenhouse tent in the basement? What's down there? Uh, anything, I'm not sure what that said, I'm sorry. 
and I can't get back to the questions because Instagram is not cooperating. So I apologize. So I do still have my tent uh, from Mars Hydro down in my basement. Um, there's a, <laughs> it's a really bad story. Um, it has been severely ignored and it desperately is in need of maintenance, watering, probably. <sighs> There are probably some dead plants in there. <laughs> it's one of those things, like everything else that seems to be in my life, out of sight, out of mind. It's down the basement. I don't go down there very often. My boys' rooms are down there, and if you have teen boys, you feel me. Um, so it's just, it's not somewhere I go all the time, and it's just, I forget about it. And by the time that I remember about it, I look in my little window, and it's like a sea of brown, and then I have extreme guilt and then I just ignore it for a few more weeks <laughs> that's what I do with most of my life actually but that's a whole other video um anyway so there are lots of plants in there I can probably bring most of them back if I ever make it down there to do so it would be nice and I will it will be nice for the day that we have a home that's has a larger main floor area with perhaps like a guest bedroom where I can put the grow tent and it's it's somewhere where I frequent a lot I can access it a lot easier but where I've got it and it's the only spot literally in my entire house that I can put it so not bad <laughs> Let's move on. Um, next question. What do you do for a living? Have you studied something? Um, so this one's a harder one to answer. So um, I went to college for network, um, computer networking and um, all of that stuff. So my Microsoft A+, uh, which is all the software, hardware, um, stuff for like I can take apart computers put them back together and stuff like that now the problem with this field was that and I didn't realize it at the time and I was really rushed into making this decision on which course I wanted to take it really wasn't what I wanted to do um and you know as all things in life hindsight is 2020 um I graduated from that program in 2005, I believe. And then by like 2006, everything that I learned, unless you keep up to date with it constantly, like if you find a job in your field, which I couldn't immediately. Um, so there, you know, the business that you're working for is upgrading along with you. You lose all of it. Everything that I've learned was obsolete the following year, mostly. Um, Anyway, it's been a really handy thing to have that I've been able to kind of like transfer into some other roles that I've had, um, but I've never actually had a job in that field. So was it a waste of 25 grand? <laughs> Absolutely. Do I regret it? <laughs> Absolutely. I would have liked to gone into psychology. That was the one thing that I've always wanted to do. And... I should have stuck to my guns and done the psychology when I wanted to. And I'm really, really disappointed that I didn't. So if you're young and you're watching this, make sure that you think of you when you're making life decisions like college courses, um, you know, things that you're passionate about because you're going to get to 42 and you're going to be like, shit, <laughs> I should have done this. And what's, what's that quote? Like, I'd rather <clears throat> regret things that I have done than to regret things that I haven't done or something like that. And that's so true. It's like, at least you've tried. At least you went out there, you did it, you tried it, you may have failed, but you learned something. And I really wish I had have done what I wanted to do. I'm kicking myself now. I could probably still do it at 42, but I think I'd be like pushing 50 easily by the time I got a degree. And I don't know if that's something I want to, I don't know what I want from life. I still don't know. I'm 42. I have no idea what I'm going to be when I grow up. Um, so 
I'm currently just strictly doing YouTube, um, which is why it helps me so, so much when you guys are able to watch the videos all the way through, when you're able to interact with the video by leaving comments, giving thumbs up, and those sorts of things. Um, it's a huge help to me, especially right now when I don't have a secondary income. Um, but for years, I was the lead administrative assistant um, at a company and uh, I worked very closely with large clients and stuff like that. And one of my passions in life has always been customer service. I like dealing with people. Well, it's so funny because in every job interview I've ever had, and when, when, when you get asked like, what is your favorite thing about you know, your previous job? It's definitely the people. I love the people. I love working with different personalities. And one of the hardest things also is working with people. And I think that's even true in you know YouTube, right? Is you have the people who are there and say kind, lovely things, and then you have the haters that just have so much anger and hate inside them that they feel the need to leave hateful and angry and sarcastic, rude comments on videos, which is so unnecessary. Um, you know, if you don't like it, just move along, just move along. You know, golden rule, if you don't have something nice to say, then just shut your mouth and go the fuck I don't think it goes like that. I'm pretty sure that's not the actual quote. Anyway, um, people on both sides of the fence are always my favorite. So I've always been in, in customer service and in uh, a lead administrative type role. And I actually um, will be going back to work here shortly in a very similar field. So that's going to be interesting. It's been um, about a year and a half since I left my previous job. I got let go because of COVID along with many, many other people in my company in particular and then across the globe as well. And so um, it's a little scary for me because I was at my previous job for eight years and um, the job before that for about six or seven years. So um, it's scary for me to be starting something new, meeting, you know, working closely with people that I've never met before and I'm really actually apprehensive about it. So send me all of your good vibes and your love and everything because I'm freaking out people. It was really long. I'm gonna move on. Okay, uh, next question. Any plant regrets? <laughs> Any peperomia or calathea I've ever bought? Probably. Um, I kind of want to say my variegated bilati. Um, yes and no. Mm, uh, I got it for a very, very good price. One that you will never be able to find right now because they are astronomical. Um, I don't even see them for sale hardly ever anymore. So I was very, very lucky to get the plant uh, when I did for what I purchased it for. Um, however, if you've been around a while, you know the struggles that I've had with that variegated bilati. Originally, um, it had a variegated leaf and a green leaf, and then it kept throwing green leaves. And then I eventually worked up the lady parts to cut it, uh, and then it, threw, it started throwing out variegated leaves. But now it's throwing out all variegated leaves, meaning all the whole leaf is yellow instead of green, uh, like it was before. So that's now causing a problem. So I know I keep saying it, but that will be an upcoming video of me chopping that thing again and praying to the plant gods that I can get some variegation going because it's just, it's been an absolute nightmare. So do I regret buying it? Not really. Has it been a pain in the ass? <laughs> oh yeah, yep, yeah, sure has. Okay, what is the best temperature for the inside of a grow tent? That one got cut off too. I'm not sure what the rest of that said. I'm assuming it's like grow tent or a cabinet or a terrarium. Um, it really depends on what plants you have in there. Um, I would say a comfortable temperature. Uh, plants usually are pretty good with the same kind of temperatures that we like. So if you're comfortable, you don't have to wear excess layers and you don't have to walk around your house naked. You know, if you can comfortably walk around your house in like sweatpants and a t-shirt, then that's probably a good temperature. So um, here in Canada, we deal in Celsius. So I would say anything from about 23, 24 Celsius to about 27, 28. Um, 
you get too much lower than that, you'll find things like slower growth. If you get too high, um, then you can cause issues like wilting, melting, um, etc. Uh, so anywhere between there is probably good. Um, if I can make myself a mental note here, I will try to put the American conversion on here in Fahrenheit. Um, I'm not sure where you're from. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So I hope that answered that question for you. Uh, the next question is the El Salvador Siltabacana actually different or another name plant? I actually have no idea what that plant is. Um, uh, or sorry, I know what the Siltabacana is, but I don't know anything about different varieties or anything like that. Um, if anybody watching here knows that, go ahead and maybe throw it down in the description or uh, link some articles perhaps that could help this person. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know. Um, how do you manage all of your plants? LOL. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. And in a couple of videos ago where I did my plant declutter, where I probably only got rid of, rid of about 10 to 15 plants. Um, I did say that it's a lot. It's very overwhelming. Um, I love it and enjoy it and I, I still keep up with it. Um, but it takes me a long, long time. So to water my entire collection um, from about 7 a.m. to about 5 or 6 p.m. Um, and then about half of the next day. So it's like a day and a half of watering. <laughs> And that's not including any repotting I have to do, any pest treatments that I have to do. That's not including, um, you know, any maintenance or anything like that. So I've kind of gotten to the point where I really hit the realization that things need to change. Um, so I've gotten rid of some plants. I'm going to be combining some plants. That's going to be an ongoing thing here over the next few months. And I'm really just trying to come to grasp with the reality that I can't do it all. <laughs> I can't keep up. I still have, you know, kids and, and a fiance and a house that needs to be taken care of. And I just found that plants were taking up so much time, especially between that and YouTube that I just, things around the house weren't getting done. And that's not okay. Um, when it's completely taking over your entire life. Um, so right now I would say I'm managing by no means am I thriving. <laughs> because I went crazy and bought way too many plants. And that is a, such a thing. That is a, such a thing. That is such a thing as too many plants. I used to say there's no such thing as, no, there really, there really, really is too many plants. Okay. Um, continuing on here. So there was a couple questions that I got asked after, um, the cutoff for my terrarium cabinet video went up. So I wanted to touch base on those. This is such a nice comment. Why do you use these horrible pink lamps? This, this is such a nice way to put that. And it's so kind of you. So I will answer you. I don't. <laughs> um, there is what appears to be a pink hue. It does come off very pink on camera, but these are actually just daytime bulbs um, like regular light. Um, they just have more of a, um, lean more to the, the reddish, um, light spectrum than they do the blue. So they do come off a little bit pink, but they look much more pink on camera than they actually look in person. But I do prefer this color light to the really harsh yellow light. I've just never really been a fan of those. And I definitely don't like those blurple lights. So thank you so much for asking your super polite question. Rude. Anyway, okay, now we're going to go ahead and tackle the questions that I received on YouTube. Yes, this video is still really friggin' long. Um, okay, so the Hatter's Madness says, Hello, Nikki, your collection is the best ever. Thank you. Um, what rare plant took you the longest to obtain. I'm talking the great plant seek and hunt, not really financially, uh, which we've all had issues with. I know you're in Canada, so the market could be a bit different. Just call me curious. Love you, girl. Um, I would probably say it's the Monstera Aurea. Um, <clears throat> it's 
from from some of the growers or some of the the plant sellers that I've t spoken to, um, they said it's really slow to grow, slow to root. So they had a harder time growing enough to sell them. And so it was really tricky. It's taken me almost three years to get that plant. I do finally have it. The weird part about it is it grows <laughs> In my care, in my house, in my conditions, it has grown super fast, way faster than my Thai constellation. Um, I would almost say almost faster than my elbow, or they're pretty even. Um, I also received it as a cutting and it rooted in a couple weeks. So I don't know, but that thing took me forever to find. Every one of my plant wish list videos, it was like, I still don't have a Monstera Aurea. That's really annoying. Um, but I have it now. I love it so much. I love that plant. And I think one of those things too, where like the longer you take to acquire something, the more appreciation that you have for it. If you <clears throat> just are able to get whatever you want, whenever you want, uh, just like a child really, you know, you have less appreciation for it. But when you have to, to struggle to get there or to really search for something, um, you just appreciate it a bit more. So I'm kind of glad that I waited, that I was forced to wait <laughs> this long and uh, I'm really glad that I have it now, so. Uh, okay, so Lindsay says, number one, what is your favorite plant in your collection? That is always such a hard question. I honestly don't think I have, have a favorite. Each one of them um, is great in its own unique way. I like each one of my plants for different things. And I don't think I could honestly pick like one particular plant that is my favorite. I even would have a hard time picking, like if I could only pick like one plant in my collection to have and that's all I could have, I would have such a difficult time with that. I honestly, I just don't know. I'm so sorry. I always suck at answering that question because I truly can't choose. Um, Lindsay also says, what plant do you struggle with the most? Peperomia, 150%. Oh, and trade scantia especially the tricolor. Can't keep those things alive to save my life. <sighs> I've just given up on them. And the last question she asked is, which plant do you neglect the most because you know you can? I'm pretty sure we all have at least one. Um, You know what, I would say, and you guys don't even see this one because it's down in my boy's bathroom downstairs, which is why, again, that it gets ignored, and that's just my regular green Monstera. I bet you didn't even know I had one of those. Surprise! <laughs> um, yeah, it was one that I saved, and it was from my original Monstera plant that I bought almost three years ago, and I still have it. It's down in the basement in my boy's bathroom. And I just neglect it constantly. So when I go down there to clean their bathroom and I see it there and it's looking so thirsty, I'm like, oh crap, I'm so sorry. I give her a water and she's bouncing right back within a couple days. So I know I can ignore her and she will be fine. And it's always better, especially I find with Monstera to err on the side of underwatering because they can get root rot rather easily. And she's just been wonderful. That's been a great plant. She has been through spider mites several rounds of thrips and my extreme neglect and she's still thriving. She's still growing leaves. It's crazy. Um, okay. Next question. With so many plants to maintain, do you check on them every day once or twice a week, uh, or once or twice a week? How is your watering routine? Um, favorite way to check and see if a plant needs water. This is a loaded question. There's three questions and there's multiple questions within the questions. Um, so as far as my watering routine, I usually water once a week. Like I said, if I'm doing all the plants in my collection at the same time, uh, it takes me about a day and a half. Um, although that's not necessarily saying that I water each and over each individual plant, they all obviously have their different watering needs, but I go around and check all of them um, and water what needs to be watered. And that seems to, to work out rather well. Um, if one doesn't need watering that particular day, it's waiting until the next week, which is usually fine. A plant's not gonna severely, 
you know, decline in that time frame. But if I happen to be walking past a plant and I notice that it's a little droopy or it's showing me signs that it needs to be watered, I'll obviously take care of that on the spot. Um, uh, I use a combination to check for water. I use a combination of um, my own personal experience with that plant. I know how heavy it is. I know what the soil usually looks like. I use my finger and I also use a moisture meter. It takes a couple extra seconds, uh, literally extra seconds to kind of combine methods of checking to see if your uh, soil is dry, um, but it's definitely worth it. Don't rely on one method specifically. Um, in my opinion, that's worked the best for me. Um, Okay, I think I answered that one. Uh, pest management, do you use preventative sprays or only when there is a bug issue? Uh, that's a good question. So I preventatively upkeep my um, plants. So every other watering, I clean, spray down the leaves with my spray. Um, I don't wash it off. So what I use is a combination of water um, peppermint, um, dish soap. And I use like, um, what's it called? I, I don't know if it's by Safers. I can't remember who it's by, but it's like a, um, insecticidal soap. And I mix that all up in my sprayer. And then every other week I spray all the leaves down, let that sit, let that dry. And that works really well. And then usually about once a month, I will clean my leaves with, um, my other mixture, which just gets all the water spots and stuff off. So that's a combination of water, um, a couple capfuls of vinegar and a splash of lemon juice that takes off hard water spots. And the more you get into the routine of doing that as you go, the less outbreaks you're going to have. Because if you're constantly cleaning your leaves, nothing has a chance to actually make a home on them. You know what I mean? Um, so that's a really important thing. And that's one thing that if you are struggling with pests, that would be my biggest piece of advice to you. Be consistent. You can't, it's not a one and done thing. You can't spray them down with safer Zendol or dead bug brew and go, we're good. We're never going to have another problem because you're wrong. Uh, you need to really stay on top of it. Um, that's why when the larger your collection gets, the much more overwhelming it can become because you just have so many leaves to check. So anyways, consistency is key. Uh, the third question she had was, how is your biggest alocasia fry deck doing? Uh, what does white edges around the fry deck mean? Best way to propagate bulbs. Okay, so um, it's doing well. Um, it desperately needs to be repotted, so it's nowhere near as big right now as it used to be. It's got multiple pups that I need to go ahead and take off. So what I'll do is I'll do a video specifically on um, my Alocasia fry deck when I do the repotting. I will show you how to remove the bulbs uh, and replant the pups, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you're watching for that video. Um, and I'll just make a whole video about it and it'll be much easier than me rambling off a bunch of stuff. My throat's getting sore from talking so much. <laughs> uh, hope you guys had nothing to do today. Um, Plants Every Inch 902 asks, if you gave, no, that's, that's not what they said. If someone gave you the choice of absolutely any plant in the world, regardless of price, location, etc., what plant would you choose? like that I don't have right now, like if I could just manifest any plan in the world, what would it be? You know what? I want my variegated banana, bla banana. I would want my variegated banana back. It broke my heart when I lost that plant because it was so difficult to get your hands on. And within about six months, it was impossible to get your hands on. And now they are just absolutely astronomical. I can't get another one at least for quite a while until those prices come way down. Um, if you can even find one, which is near impossible. So I think that would be it. I really, really am upset that that plant didn't make it and I miss it. Poor Paisley. R.I.P. Paisley. Oh. Um, yeah, 
that would be that would be my answer. Um, what's the care requirements for your Diffenbachia reflector? I struggle with them. Uh, I struggle with them. Watering is always an issue. So that one, I don't water it. Um, I water it when it's about a two on my moisture meter. So that would be when the water, the moist soil is fairly near the bottom. Um, and it, it, it sits literally right underneath one of my grow lights. They like brighter light, I find, than, say, my big uh, Diffenbachia. So bright light, water only when it's dry. Um, make sure it doesn't get dry to the point where all the leaves are, are drooping a whole lot. Um, I never recommend waiting until a plant is showing you massive signs of underwatering to water it. It's just not good practice. It's not good for the plant. Uh, it's great for us because it shows us that it needs to be watered, but it's really not good for the plant. So if you can avoid doing that, please do so. Um, but yeah, bright, bright light and um, even regular watering when it's dry. I hope that helps. Uh, when I implemented those things my reflector just took off before then I was struggling so hard with it and now it's growing like an absolute beast so I hope that helps um what is your biggest concern on your houseplant collection example no electricity during the winter lol uh you mean like would that be a major concern if my power went out oh heck yeah my plants would all die, especially like here in Canada in the winter. It can get down to like minus 40 Celsius. I mean, I don't know if I would survive that, <laughs> let alone like my plants. They would all just crystallize and die on me and it wouldn't be a good situation. Um, but aside from any like catastrophic failures like that, um, my biggest concern is always just the upkeep of of pest issues and the the undertaking that it is to to make sure that I'm keeping up with my pest prevention so that I'm being proactive instead of reactive because it's always better to you know take a little extra time beforehand and do you know your proactive measures than to react after all of your plants have this massive outbreak and you're panicking they're moving from plant to plant and it's just something that you can kind of like nip in the bud before it happens um but yeah pest is an, always an ongoing struggle that i just wish i didn't have to deal with but it's just part of being a plant parent uh, do you feel anxious when you're away on vacation, uh, like leaving your plant babies behind? I do, actually. Uh, I was at the trailer for just over a week there in the summer, and like it, it's a lot. Like you can make all the plans, make sure that before you leave, everything that needs to be watered is watered. Um, all of my lights are on timers, so I don't worry about that so much. I know that my lights are all going to come on at a certain time, go off at a certain time, so I don't need to worry about the lighting. So the more things that you can automate, the better. Um, and if you're only going away for a week or less, you don't need somebody to come over and water your plants, really. Um, they will be just fine, unless you have some really sensitive plants that will die if they're not watered every two days, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head that requires that. Um, I have a peace lily here, and even it, when I came back, was literally drooping to the point where it's like almost lying on the table. Um, I watered her with a thorough watering, and she's sitting right beside me now, perky as ever, super happy. Um, so it's not too stressful, and I don't go away from the house very often, and I definitely don't go away from the house for longer than a week usually, so. What do you do with all of your alocasia fry deck bulbs? There must be a lot. We're gonna find out. We'll do that video and we'll see how many are in there. And I'll probably actually leave some of them in there because I would like to have like a big full pot. Um, you can take them out if you want, but I love the look of a fry deck, um, just a pot of fry deck, you know what I mean? Uh, because normally you have just the one stalk shooting up and then you have the leaves coming out. But when you have multiple, it just makes it look so much more full and, and beautiful and velvety and fantastic. Uh, so we'll take a look at that for sure when I do that video. Okay, we have four questions left, which is good because I have a really special video that I have to film right after this and I need 
my singing voice <clears throat> prepared. If you know, you know. If you don't know, don't worry, you will know. It's mysterious, isn't it? Anyways, um, so last four questions, and then I'm going to go film that video. So um, Melanie asks, what's your family's favorite thing that you bake? You must follow me on Instagram. <laughs> um, <sighs> hmm. They really like the pies that I make. I love making apple pie. I make the, um, it was so funny when I first started baking pies, I, I had all kinds of people telling me like, just go out, do yourself a favor, go out, buy a pie crust from, you know, the store, like a pre-made one, save yourself the time and the effort and the hassle. They're so hard to do. And I said, no. <laughs> um, I have one of those things where like, if somebody tells me I can't do something or I shouldn't do something or like, oh, don't do it that way. It's too hard. I will go to the ends of the earth to prove them wrong. Like I can do something and you should be that way too. Don't let anybody ever tell you that you can't do something. You go make that pie crust, girl, guy, whoever. You go make that pie crust. I'm telling you. Anyway, um, so they really like it when I make my apple pies. Um, I also do this amazing banana bread with chocolate chips, walnuts if I have them, because I love walnuts and banana bread. Um, and it's super, super delicious. Uh, so those are probably like the two favorite things. Um, I have some new recipes that I want to try that I'm really excited about that are a little more tricky and require a little bit more technique. Um, I want to try a mirror glaze on a cake. I think that would be super fun. I've never done that before. And I just find they look so cool. They're so pretty and people do like different ones and they just look incredible. Here's a picture of a mirror glaze cake in case you don't know what that is. It's literally a glaze that you uh, drizzle over the top of the cake um, and it dries and it really does. It's, it's got these reflective properties. It's beautiful. It looks like glass. Anyway, and then macarons is the other thing I want to try making. Uh, they're little cookies. I'm sure you've seen them. Here they are. Uh, so those are the two next things that I want to kind of try my hand at. I love figuring stuff like that out. And so those are next on my list. I hope that answered and then some. <laughs> oh. Nikki, why do you do this to yourself? Um, <clears throat> Lisa wants to know, how are the carnivorous plants doing? Uh, most of them are doing really well. My pitcher plants are doing great. But that one that I got, uh, Saracenia. <sighs> I might have said that wrong. I'll put it here. Um, they're like a trumpet. I think some people refer them as trumpet plant. They just come out of the ground and they're like, look, they look like a trumpet. Um, that one didn't make it. I don't know why it's really odd. I don't know if just the plant itself uh, didn't have something it needed, um, but it didn't make it. But all of the other plants that I have are, are doing well my butterworts and my nepenthes. Um, I would like to get some more um, carnivorous plants. Uh, probably not a Venus flytrap because they can be tricky. They do have to go through a dormancy period and ain't nobody got time for that. Um, but yeah, I would like to get some more like different kinds of pitcher plants. There's some really, really cool and beautiful ones out there. So that might be a thing for the spring. That rhymed. Poet. Uh, second last question. I'm such a big fan from Australia. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much. Hello, Australia. Um, why do you not have a fiddle leaf fig? Don't you like them? <laughs> no. Um, no, I, I like them. I think they're beautiful. Um, if I was to get a fiddle leaf, I would want it to be a the big, not the dwarf size. I used to have a dwarf one. Um, I would want the big size, but the problem is I just don't have the space for it. Uh, this house is not huge, uh, by any means it's, it is quite small, uh, especially with the, the way it's laid out. So I just don't have the space for a fiddle leaf fig. Maybe, you know, if I move down the road or so, uh, you know, a few years down the road or so, I might, you know, consider getting one, but right now it's just not one that I'm like, yay, let's get a fiddle leaf fig. Um, <clears throat> but I know tons of people who absolutely love them. We just don't. 
Uh, okay, the last question. My voice is going so bad. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> the last question is how can I, this is not good. <clears throat> how can I get a thriving Diffenbachia like yours? I'm assuming you mean my big one. Um, honestly, there it's the easiest plant that I have, I think. Um, I water it when I remember to. Uh, it gets ambient light from the grow lights here in the dining room. And then in the morning, it gets light coming through. It's sitting about eight feet away from my uh, southeast patio door. And so it gets some nice light in the morning. Other than that, um, it's honestly just such an easy plant. Here it is in case you don't know what my Diffenbachia looks like. Uh, she's big. She's a big girl. Um, one of the key things that I will say is make sure you keep the leaves clean. Um, she did have a spider mite outbreak a couple years ago. And even, even that, and then she got thrips the following year, like, and it's, it's just taken a lick and she's kept on ticking. The leaves are really, really, um, sturdy in that regard. And there wasn't a whole lot of like obvious pest damage, that like you could walk by and on some other plants you look at them you're like ooh that plant has spider mites like that this plant you never would have known um, unless you really got in there and looked um, but honestly I don't have a problem with the plant it's so easy it just sits here in my kitchen I'm keep looking there because it's like right there um, so that's it and give it like decent light uh, I had it in a dark like low light I would call it not no light but low light setting when I first got it and even still it still grew new leaves all the time uh, but since I've moved it here it's really started thriving so bump the light up to bright um, like medium medium light would be great uh, you can probably bump it up to like medium to bright and it would love that um, I water it every two weeks or so and wash the leaves and that's it. She's easy peasy and she's a beautiful plant. I love her. Okay. Uh, I think that's all. Yes, I think that's all. Um, that was a lot. <laughs> I'm going to have to try to edit this down the best I can, uh, or else this video is going to be like two hours long. I can see that, uh, this particular recording has been going on for 34 minutes and that was just the second half. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope that I got to your question. I don't think I missed any. Um, and I hope you like this format and you're not too mad about the fact that I didn't do a repotting along with it. It was just a lot. And with all the questions that I had, it would have taken me three times as long to answer them all. My voice is going and I have to sing. Oh my God. Okay. I'm going to wrap this video up and go suck on a lemon. Um, Thank you guys so much for liking, watching, commenting, and subscribing. If you're not subscribed already, please consider doing so. It is a huge help for my channel, and I personally really, really do appreciate it. Be nice to each other, please. Please. <laughs> and also, have an amazing day, night, week, month, and year. I love you all to bitty bits, and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah.